Sometimes I really feel like it's all just too much. And sometimes I feel like there's just not enough. And I'm not enough. And at times like that, I like to remember Plato. Remember Plato? Clay? Kindergarten. My favorite part, you know. You get a lump of something and you get to make anything you want. Teacher says you can make anything you want. Your ears of clay, you got next 15 minutes, whatever. But then they only give you this little bitty clump, you know. <laughs> because teachers only got one box of clay, it's got to go among all the kids in the class. So you get this little bitty clump. I can make anything I want, but it turns out that mostly all I can make is little snakes. Or pathetic little stick figures that really don't look like much. And, I, and, 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 and so then I look over there, and if only I had that color clay, then I could make something. Or if only I had her clay. Her clay's bigger. I could, she has a bigger lump than mine. If I just had, had that clay, then I could make something. And, and, and all the tell, teacher was trying to tell me that I could make anything I wanted. The lesson I learned in kindergarten is I didn't really know how to make what I wanted. I could only make snakes and dad stick figures, and I didn't have enough clay. And the truth is that for many years I lived my life that way, forgetting that all of life is just one big vat of Play-Doh, that I can shape and make anything I want. My life is Play-Doh. And I can, with my consciousness, I have the power to shape it any way I want. But for a long time, decades, I just got a bunch of feedback, <laughs> static for myself. Wow. Yeah. And for a long time, I lived up my life as if I didn't have enough and as if I were the victim of other people making the world a clay Play-Doh around me. I, I was a victim of the man. I was the victim of the economic system that was dominating the earth and enslaving us for capitalist gain. And I, I couldn't, I, there was no way I could win. Just an artist, all I could do was be mad about it and try to get along with my little bitty clay, <laughs> make little stick figures and snakes. But in recent years, I've come to understand that in fact, I am, we are powerful co-creators. That in fact, the world is one big, fast, that of Play-Doh. And I can create, co-create, whatever I choose. I have to be real careful about this. I, 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 there was a time when I thought I could create my reality, but I've come to understand I co-create my reality with my consciousness. Because it turns out there's seven billion other people on the planet who are also co-creating. And uh, part of my task is learning how to, how to play well with others and how to co-create what my heart truly longs to see manifested on the earth. And the good news is that contemporary science Contemporary psychology is telling us in unequivocal terms what the spiritual masters have always been telling us. That in fact, we are powerful co-creators. That in fact, all of creation is malleable. And in fact, all of creation wants to, needs to, is going to conform to my expectations. If I argue for my limitations, the fact that I'm a victim and I can't, and all I can make is stick figures and the snakes, and all I've got is this, I'm absolutely right. Argue for your limitations and you'll always be right. And now I choose to argue for my limitlessness. As a matter of fact, I choose not to argue at all. I choose to simply be present with the awareness that I am free and unlimited and can manifest in alignment with the divine at any point that I choose. And I can forget. I can be a victim. I can be separate. I can be small. The universe always says yes. So if I say no, the universe says yes to my no. Absolutely, every time. But if I say yes, the universe says yes to my yes. That is the nature, that is the secret, which is no secret at all. And we forget. I forget. We forget on a regular basis. That's why we're here this morning, to remind each other, psst, hey, wake up. 
There's lots of Play-Doh. There's lots of Play-Doh, and you can have as much as you want. You can make whatever you want. And it used to be a secret. It used to be a relatively small number of spiritual adepts knew this. And then over time it became uh, part of the mainstream to such an extent that now even the latest mag issue of Time magazine touts in several articles the fact that thinking you're going to be healthy makes you healthy. <laughs> thinking you're going to live long means you live long. Thinking that you can heal yourself means you can heal yourself. And it's not just namby-pamby, hippy-dippy thinking. It is proven scientific fact that we absolutely have power to co-create our realities, to heal ourselves and to heal each other and that there is no reason whatsoever to think otherwise. And how many of us walk into the store saying, I'm looking for a new suit, but I kind of only have a suit that's pink, and it can only be a suit that's size 32, and it can only be a suit that's made out of silk fabric, and it can only be a suit that's made out of silk, pink, silk, pink silk fabric made in Singapore, uh, in, in the United States, can't be made anywhere else, and it can only come from one state in the, in the country. And I can't find a suit that works for me. When, in fact, God is calling me every single moment of every single day to remind me, one size fits all. Everything you want in the universe is here for your asking. If you're willing to open your blinders and see the vastness of creation that's waiting. Time and again, we like to tell stories about our problems. We like to tell, we just love to tell all the things that are wrong with us. Um, it's just amazing. I, I, uh, I like telling stories myself. I like telling stories in which I overcome. And you like telling stories about overcoming too. That's why you tell at long length to your friends. When you say they ask, how are you? You tell them at long length about your doctor's visits. And you tell them at long length about the difficulties you had with your mother-in-law or the difficulties you had with the kids and, and how you overcame and you didn't. And, and that's okay. You're perfectly free to do that. But I'm also free, you're also free to skip the story and go straight to the Play-Doh. And remember, there's a limitless palette of Play-Doh. It's not just quantity, but the color, the size, the shape of anything you want to create is there. Why stay stuck in your story? Speaking of stories, there's an old Buddhist tale about a young monk who came to see the abbot of the monastery. He said, sir, I have a problem, a big problem. And the abbot said, oh, you have a big problem? Hmm. Well, why don't you come to the Friday assembly when everyone will be here? And we'll tell them about it. So on Friday, all the monks gathered from several monasteries. And the abbot brought the young monk up in front and said, brothers, this monk has a big problem. Room sat in silence for a while. The abbot said, okay, you can sit down now. We all have problems. <laughs> telling them to one person or a room full of persons, telling them once, telling them a hundred times, doesn't change anything. Letting go of the problem and choosing to play with the Play-Doh. It's a choice that's always available to me. At least, that's my story, but I'm sticking to it. <laughs>